Hey there, how's it going? So I just saw a comment on a Facebook group I'm in that really bugged me. <laughs> and I wanted to throw this out there just in case you encounter this. So there's a, there's another YouTuber, YouTube creator, and he evidently, his channel is, is all about uh, Bible knowledge and he does Bible stuff. And for some reason I read in the, in the, in the message, he feels like his channel isn't growing that well. And that someone, as he said, made the comment to him that the reason his channel isn't growing is because of him, that people don't like listening to him or seeing him, and it's all him. And the guy, it really bothered him. I mean, it really bothered him that that there'd be this belief out there. So he was asking all this advice about how to get better on camera and all this other stuff. Now, I'm all about growing and doing. My background's television, and that's been good and bad because I have to overcome just the constant trying to overproduce and, and perfect everything. But I made the comment to him, and I, and I wanted to share this with you in case you have run into this or do run into this. When somebody says to me, someone, or people say, I kind of put those together, and what I think they're really saying is what they feel. Um, I seriously doubt that they've gone and polled a bunch of people to come up with this unsolicited opinion to let me know. And it's typically always about, you know, something you're doing wrong or something they don't like. And so it's really more that person's opinion. Now, do I think you discard it? No. Um, so I, years ago in television, there was uh, one of our salespeople and uh, I'll call her Stephanie. That wasn't her name, but I'm not going to say her real name. And um, she was a ball of energy and she was a pain in the butt. Um, she was just, it was constantly complaining about something, constantly trying to do things, not unethical, but a lot of times really kind of pushing things that we could do as a station. Um, she would never take no for an answer. And I, I'm all about initiative, but a lot of times it was like, Stephanie, no, we, 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 we can't do that because of X, Y, or Z. And, but the thing is though, I always listened to what she was saying, even if it was a complaint, and there were always complaints about something, because I didn't want to just completely write her off and completely discount what she was saying, because what if she said something and I go, you know, that's that's fair, or that's that's a good point. So I say that with a grain of salt, that whenever you and I do this, I think whenever you decide to publish content for public, on the World Wide Web, you're kind of allowing others to armchair quarterback you, if you will. And I, I, I love NFL, and I can tell you what most of the coaches are doing wrong, what the players should have done better. And I've never, <laughs> never played professional sports in my life. But that's kind of what people do. They sit and judge. Uh, I think a lot of times when I've had really more negative comments, people kind of poking at things I've done, especially on YouTube, most of those don't even have channels, or most of them don't even have content on their channels. They're not even producing. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm just talking about putting yourself out there, realizing there's always going to be somebody that doesn't like you, doesn't like your content, doesn't like your delivery. <laughs> Here's an example. So a buddy of mine that I finally convinced to get on YouTube a few years ago, and he's he's doing really well, having a blast, making money. Um, he could not, actually, he didn't even know who Casey Neistat was. Didn't even know who he was. And I sent him a video once. I said, hey, you've really got to watch this. And he goes, oh, dude, he said, I, I can't stand that guy. And what happened is, and this is what YouTube does, when you watch something, they'll think, oh, you know, you're interested in this. So the next time he goes on YouTube, he's he's got served up all these Casey videos. And he was like, stop it. Stop it. That's all they're doing. It was driving him nuts. Well, guess what? Now he loves Casey and he'll go, hey, did you see Casey's latest video? So my point is at one point, he didn't know who he was. There's more people out there that don't know who you and I are, that know who we are. The majority of my subscribers, according to YouTube, don't even watch my videos after they subscribe. I appreciate it. If you're one of those, I appreciate it. But you know, th th there's, there's more people in this world that don't even know we exist. And then what I have found, some people just kind of get off on just trying to grind people. And I've had some negative comments, thankfully not a ton. But, you know, I, I think you listen with a grain of salt to constructive criticism, 
from where it's coming from. You know, I recently wrote a book, uh, finally. And, you know, I couldn't really critique other people about writing books because I'd never written one. Now, I've also only written one, so you have to you have to weigh that. But I just wanted to share this because this this other YouTube creator was really beat up and he was asking all these other people about how to get better. I do believe that we can get better at our crafts, if you will. I've been doing this a long, long time. It comes easy to me, natural, if you will, just to sit down in front of a camera and start talking like I'm talking on a mic. But that doesn't mean I can't grow and, and do different things. So I just wanted to share this in case you run into one of those situations where people are telling you that you are the problem. You're the reason that your videos aren't growing because they're not that, you know, you're not that good on camera. Maybe you do need to get better. Maybe you do need to grow. But also know that not everybody likes everything we do. And that's okay too.